Welcome everybody, this is Dr. Valentin at Houston Metropolitan Medical. And today in this video, I'm gonna show you what peripheral artery disease is, what risk factors would predispose you to developing peripheral artery disease. We will also talk about the signs and symptoms that should trigger a visit to your doctor, as well as how we diagnose it and treat it in clinic. It is September and it's Peripheral Artery Disease Awareness Month. In a survey last year done by the PAD Alliance and its partners, it was brought to light that at least 70% of Americans lack awareness of peripheral artery disease. Of most important was that most of the patients that had or knew somebody that had some of the major risk factors for developing peripheral artery disease, the minority believed they could be at risk. Peripheral artery disease is a disease that if not kept in check can lead to non-healing wounds and ultimately amputation and accounting for around 400 of the amputations in the U.S. alone. Not to mention it's associated with coronary artery disease and stroke. Also, the patients who receive amputation as a result of peripheral artery disease, 48% die within the first year after amputation and at least 71% after amputation in the first three years. So what is peripheral artery disease? Peripheral artery disease is a decrease in blood flow and therefore oxygen to the lower extremities due to narrowing of the arteries. Out of all the causes of peripheral artery disease, atherosclerosis is the most common one and the one we will focus on here today. Atherosclerosis is the buildup of cholesterol and fats on and in the artery wall, and we most commonly call it as plaque. So what signs and symptoms can peripheral artery disease present with? Well, the number one most common complaint is leg pain. And this leg pain is usually when walking. Patients complain that they start walking after three to five minutes, they start developing a achiness or cramping or heaviness in the lower extremities that is relieved with rest after two to three minutes when they stop walking. Other signs and symptoms are numbness, tingling, um, loss of hair in your extremities, and sometimes patients can perceive that one of their extremities is cooler to the touch than the other. When peripheral artery disease progresses, it can present with non-healing wounds or pain at rest. So the top three risk factors for developing peripheral artery disease are smoking, diabetes, and hypertension. To highlight these risk factors, people with diabetes are three to four times more likely to develop peripheral artery disease, while 35 to 55% of people with peripheral artery disease suffer from hypertension. Alarmingly, 80% of the patients with peripheral artery disease are current smokers or former smokers. So how do we make the diagnosis of peripheral artery disease? Well, once you develop some symptoms and you discuss with your doctor that you're having leg pain when walking, you might have some leg numbness or tingling or decreased hairs or one of the legs is cooler to the touch compared to the other leg your doctor will perform an exam okay to determine that you know this in fact is true and also he will check your pulses a test that he can order is an ankle brachial index or an abi and an abi is or ankle breaker index is is a comparison of your ankle pressures ankle arterial pressures compared to your arterial pressures to your arm. And this ABA value should range between one and 1 1.3, which is considered normal. A value of 0.9 or below, or from 0.9 to 0.41, is considered mild to moderate peripheral artery disease, while an ABI of 0.4 or below is considered to be severe. Once we have an ABI of below nine, or usually also we can maybe do it when it's below one, we consider you to having peripheral artery disease. So how do we treat peripheral artery disease? So m the beginning of every uh, treatment is to try to prevent it with lifestyle modifications um, that can help reduce the chances of developing diabetes, uh, reducing the chances of developing hypertension, high cholesterol, and avoid smoking. So once we have peripheral artery disease and you're having symptoms like pain when walking and as we call it intermittent claudication, we recommend a supervised exercise therapy. This exercise program will improve your symptoms and decreases the chance of peripheral artery disease of progressing. Patients who smoke, we recommend that they stop smoking 
Um, it's the most important and, and easiest modifiable risk factor that we have. Uh, so if you smoke or a loved one that suffers from peripheral artery disease um, uh, smokes, we recommend talking to your doctor uh, because there are some uh, medicines that can help you with it, like Chantix or Wilbutrin, um, or also you might consider using a nicotine patch to help you quit smoking. If you have diabetes, the recommended um, goal is to have a hemoglobin A1C of below seven. Uh, so you have, so if you haven't done a hemoglobin A1C within the last three months, uh, we recommend you following up with your doctor to have it checked. And if it's above seven, we recommend um, either lifestyle changes where less sugar uh, intake will help lower that number, or your doctor might uh, modify your medicines. Uh, we have oral medicines, we have um, injection medicines, there's newer ones that can help you lower your goal. Very important to talk to your doctor to make sure um, uh, which medicine is most um, beneficial for you. Patients who have high blood pressure, our target goal is for a systolic blood pressure, that's the top number on your blood pressure, to be below 140 and the bottom number to be below 85. Again, there's different types of medication that can help you lower your blood pressure. Uh, you should talk to your doctor to see which one is the best for you in combination with lifestyle modifications, like increasing physical activity and lowering salt intake the, from your foods. Other risk factors are high cholesterol. Um, so patients with peripheral artery disease, um, patients who have diabetes or cholesterol, um, we recommend lowering your total cholesterol and your LDL with that LDL, which is the bad cholesterol, to keep it below a 70. So everybody that has peripheral artery disease should be on a statin to help um, make that atherosclerosis or plaque stabilize and prevent further progression of it. And finally, anybody with peripheral artery disease should be on a baby aspirin or a 81 milligram aspirin daily. If somebody has peripheral artery disease and has leg pain, um, if you follow all of these guidelines, like your exercise um, program, you um, lower your, your hemoglobin A1C and keep your diabetes under control, you stop smoking, you keep your blood pressure under control, you have your statin and you take your baby aspirin, you have the best chances of it not progressing. We, in the literature, if, all, if patients take all these steps, 66% uh, of the patients will not progress. So what do we do if your symptoms progress? So what do we do if your peripheral artery disease progresses and you develop um, rest pain or you start developing non-healing wounds? At this point, your primary care doctor will refer you to a vascular surgeon for an evaluation. The vascular surgeon will proceed to maybe do a, in, a deeper study like a, um, a duplex, a arterial duplex of your lower extremities to try to determine where exactly this, this um, blockage is in your arteries. But most likely, once you have um, a non-healing wound, um, they will go to and geography, okay? It's the best test to determine where exactly the, the stenosis is in your extremities and to see if there's a focal or one area that's stenosed or if there are several um, uh, points of narrowing throughout your arteries. Remember, um, your artery goes from your groin down to your toes. After your angiography and if they notice that you have a single focal point, they will proceed with balloon angioplasty, which opens up that narrowing and increases blood flow to your leg. If the narrowing is above the knee and if they believe that it's beneficial for you, they might put a stent to keep it open. If by chance you have more than one point um, or the disease, the peripheral artery disease is extensive, then maybe they'll recommend a bypass surgery at that point. If you're interested in how you can prevent hair loss or regrow some of it back, please check out this video that we have here where we go over the most common causes of hair loss and the best treatments available for you. Thank you everybody for watching. If you have a question regarding any topic that you would like for us to make a video of it, please leave a comment regarding this in the comments below.